What's up everybody, the Blue Fang here, and today I'm back with a new what if, which would be what if Hashirama had kept all of the Biju and didn't separate them around to different villages. This is basically gonna have a similar start to my other what if, which was what if Naruto had all of the Biju, but this time Naruto wouldn't have all of the Biju for himself, but they would be separated to different clans of the village. If you guys would like a part 2 to this what if, the like goal will be 250 likes for the next part. Now before we get into this video, subscribe if you're new, hit the like button and turn on bell notifications. So with no further ado, let's get into the video. So the way this what if would go would be that Hashirama wouldn't give out the Bijus he had captured to the other villages but would keep it for his own village to gain the greater power of the shinobi world. He cared so much about Konoha that he would think about them first and not give a thought about the other villages. So the leaf village would be the strongest village in power making different wars happen because the other villages would want power for themselves as well. In the wars the leaf would train Jinshurikis to take part in them so they can win easily which would happen. Also the Jinshurikis were able to befriend their respective Biju able to be some of the most powerful people in the village. The Jinshurikis would be chosen because of their clans or if seen as a capable and strong shinobi they could be picked as well. Basically all of the clans that would be picked would be the Uzumaki because of Hashirama's connection to them, the Uchiha, the Hyuga, the Nara, the Akumichi, the Abramane, the Unizuka and the Yamanaka. Basically all the clans that some of the Rookie 9 were in. The last spot of the Jinshurikis would be chosen by recommendation instead of a clan, so they could be people that are known to be strong and capable of being a Jinshuriki. Also before I get into the story, I just have to say that Rin still became a Jinshuriki but in a different way. The village hidden in the mist was able to kill the Free Tails Jinshuriki and catch the Free Tails for themselves. They were manipulated by Madara to do this and they then transferred the Free Tails into Rin. Eventually her death happens thus making Obito into who he is. The Leaf Village does get the Free Tails back though after Rin's death. I just thought I had to get that out of the way because I'm sure people would start to go, at, go down in the comments and start typing away once Obito shows up as a villain in the story. Now the start of this would've would be the Ninetales attack happening. Kushina wouldn't be able to control the Ninetales fully to defend herself because she is pregnant, making Obito be able to control the Ninetales. The attack goes the same way as in the original, but this time the damage is reduced because of the other Jinchurikis helping out. The Ninetales is then eventually sealed into Naruto, while Minato and Kushina die. Years passed with the new Jinshurikis being chosen as the next generation of capable Jinshurikis. Of course they would be sorted because of their clans, while someone else who isn't in a big clan yet they are promising is picked as well. So this time Naruto's life isn't the same as in the original, as the village knows about the Jinshuriki stuff now, instead of just knowing about how Naruto is the Ninetales. Naruto would be treated well and also given training so he can control the QB at his disposal. The training would start when he is at the age of 7 and go for years until he finishes when he is 12 years old. Once he is 12, he is transferred to a new place instead of having to graduate at the academy. The place would be the location of where all the current Jinshurikis would have to go for the new unit that the Hokage has thought of making. A Jinshuriki unit that is given top missions instead of having to be Genin, Chunin, Jonin or Anbu. Also they are trained so they could be on the front lines when there is another war since the leaf village doesn't know when the other villages could attack as they aren't on safe terms with the rest of the shinobi world. We cut to once Naruto makes his way to the location that Hiruzen had given him with him being excited to find out what it is. When he is walking he runs into a few other people that look his age. The people are Kiba, Shikamaru and Choji. Naruto decides to ask them if they're going the same way he is with Shikamaru saying that they are since they were told by the Hokage to go there. Naruto instantly realizes that these guys are the other Jinchurikis who were probably trained the same way he was over the years and now have to go to this location. He decides to ask what Biju they have and Kiba grins and instantly replies saying that he has the four-tailed beast inside of him. After he says this, 
He goes on about all of the abilities he has trained, but eventually Shikamaru and Choji cut in to talk about the tailed beast. Choji says that he has the three tailed beast, and Shikamaru says that he has got the one tailed beast. All three of them have been able to train their biju to be able to fight with them, but not fully as they're still young. Naruto then explains his biju, which is the nine tailed beast. The three of them are shocked to hear this, as the Ninetales is the strongest tailed beast and also the one that went on a rampage years ago. Eventually they continue onto their path to the location. We cut to once they are there and they get to see the rest of the new generation Jinshurikis, being Shino who has the seven tails, Hinata who has the five tails, Ino who has the six tails and Sasuke who has the two tails. The last Jinshuriki though who has the eight tails walks out from a door revealing himself. They wave their hand at everyone and tell them that his name is Kakashi Hatake, and also says welcome to the new Jinshuriki unit. Kakashi goes on to explain everything about this new unit while also saying that he himself is a Jinshuriki as well and has the eight-tailed beast inside of him. This was due to him being seen as a great and trusted shinobi instead of any important clan connections. He talks about how the unit is going to be operated and how he will be watching all of the young members but he will not be the true captain of the unit though. The Hokage has decided that Kakashi would only be the helper of the unit while he does some other chosen important missions by himself while the new Jinshuriki team has to have its own captain to be chosen by Kakashi himself. Naruto straight up says that he will be the captain and tells everyone that the person with the strongest biju should have to be the leader. Kiba then cuts in saying that no one even knows that Naruto can be able to control the nine tails since it would be hard to control a tailed beast that was able to rampage around the village. Naruto snaps back at Kiba and they begin to argue. Shikamaru watches them and just sighs saying what a drag and sits down with Choji by his side as well. Kakashi then starts to laugh. Well, since you guys are both so energetic, let's settle the leadership choosing as a mini tournament. Both Naruto and Kiba grin and begin to get even more excited, while the rest of the Jinshurikis look ready as well. We then cut to a place where Kakashi has chosen for the fights to break out. He will also use this opportunity to observe the skills of this new unit as well. The first bracket made by Kakashi would be Ino vs Hinata, Shino vs Choji, Naruto vs Kiba and Shikamaru vs Sasuke. The first two people start off the tournament would be Ino and Hinata. Now Hinata had been picked to be the Jinshuriki of the Hyuga clan of this generation instead of Neji because she is not from the branch family like he is. And of course the main family are more important than the branch family. So Hinata was picked instead of him because of that. Now her fight with Ino starts off with her jumping backwards to create some distance between her opponent. Ino doesn't do this though, but begins to shoot out sticky substance from her hands. This is due to the Six Tails ability. Hinata dodges the attacks that are coming her way, but then once Ino is able to actually get one of her sticky attacks onto Hinata's arm, she tugs on it like a rope and throws herself at Hinata using the stickiness. As Ino gets into Hinata's range, Hinata is quickly able to do her first attack, boiling release with gentle fist. She is able to hit Ino at her chakra points quick enough to mess with her chakra, causing her to go off balance. Hinata then hits her with one last attack, able to beat Ino down. Kakashi declares Hinata as the winner, so the next round could begin. Shino vs Choji is up now, with Shino starting off using the Seven Tails ability of Blinding Powder to mask his appearance. He is then able to swiftly get behind Choji to send his first attack at him, but once he throws a punch, his hand gets damaged on impact as Choji had put his Coral Lease Jutsu to guard himself around his body like armor. This is of course from the Three Tails. Shino bounces back since he now knows Choji has found out where he is. They both continue to battle, battle it out, with the both of them coming close to beating each other until Shino is able to come out as the winner. Now the next fight is Naruto vs Kiba. They both grin at each other with the determination to win, and without any time to get ready, they both rush at each other. Naruto starts off with a big nine-tailed fused attack right into Kiba's face, sending him into a wall. But then Kiba gets right back up and rushes in again trying to send some attacks at Naruto. But Naruto is just too fast when he's fighting using some of the Night Tails ability and is able to get behind Kiba in a flash and knock him out cold. Naruto chuckles at this and goes back out of the arena. 
Also, the form Naruto was fighting him in was not the Nine Tails mood, but kind of like the form from when he was fighting Haku in. The last fight would be Sasuke and Shikamaru. The fight starts off with Sasuke sending a lot of fireballs at Shikamaru, with Shikamaru having to guide some of them off course using the One Tails wind bullets. Also, in this what if, I will be having Shikamaru be able to use wind release as his nature transformation. But after guiding most of the fireballs off course, Shikamaru is met with more fireballs with Sasuke being able to send a load of them thanks to the two tails being compatible with the jutsu a lot. Sasuke is then able to overpower Shikamaru, winning the fight. We cut to once Kakashi has looked at these results to tell everyone who will be versing for the final round. He will only be picking two of the best ones for it though, so the captain could be picked in that last final match. And the two people who he picks are Naruto Uzumaki and Sasuke Uchiha. And that's where I'm going to end off for today. Hopefully you did enjoy and if you did, make sure to get this video to 250 likes for the next part. Now the next parts after this will be even more interesting as this new Jinshiriki unit could have a lot of potential to do many things in this what if. Also I'll be explaining Naruto's training in the next parts so you can know how Naruto was able to work with Kuruma already. So like always, subscribe if you're new, hit the like button and turn on bell notifications. It's been the Blue Fang, peace.